garbage canned. This woman throws out one can of garbage a year. Tonight, you'll learn the secrets on how to take the trash out of your life for good. From the global resources of ABC News with Terry Moran, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, this is Nightline, November 21st, 2008. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, Americans produced 254 million tons of waste last year. That's a staggering amount. And while most cities and towns have extensive recycling programs, you might be astounded to learn how a few simple steps can make your household the green envy of the neighborhood. As Lisa Fletcher now reports. It seems to happen almost unconsciously. We eat a meal, then we toss the packaging. We have a drink, then we toss the bottle. We consume, and we discard. The typical American throws out over four pounds of trash a day. And most families throw out at least a 24-gallon bin a week. But for Jean Roy of Portland, Oregon, taking out the trash is an annual event. You heard us right. Well, in our own household, um, we just generate one um, garbage can per year. How does she do it? These are non-curbside recyclable, so... Roy is an expert in reducing, reusing, and recycling. But my magazines go here. She only trashes what's truly trash, which turns out to be very little. These motor bo um, oil bottles, because because of the hazardous waste inside, they can't be recycled. There's some, this tape, which is contaminated with paint. This is some um, linoleum. Roy has spent the last three decades teaching people waste reduction. Her garbage curriculum has inspired Heather Hawkins, and banana peels and apple cores, and Renee Lamone. Another packaging insert, this is Mylar. Two trash-talking moms who say if they can reduce their family trash, then anyone can. There really is no need for us to have paper towels. Soccer moms by day, Enviro moms by choice, they've started a blog with the goal of taking practical green living to mainstream America. We don't want to be knitting out of dog hair, and we don't want to be living off of the grid. You know, we don't want to get that crazy, because I don't think you reach people that way. People right. say, that's extreme, and I'll never do that. Yeah. While one garbage can a year might sound a little crazy, Heather and Renee say one can a month is completely doable for the average family. Sounds impossible, I know, but they say all you need is a system. Oh, please fit. It fits. On this day, we've asked Heather and Renee to do a trash intervention. Yes, where's my cape? Hello. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready for your trash makeover? <laughs> afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy and Mark Lear, along with son Ike, want to make the least of their garbage without trashing their home. Okay. We're going to make it so that it is seamless, that it's just going to be part of your lives. The family already recycles some things. Uh, a metal can in here. But Heather and Renee want the Lears to step it up a notch. So through the freezer. So all of these freezer boxes in here, none, none of them can be recycled. To the pantry. I mean, luckily, you know, cardboard, these kind of things can be recycled. Uh, plastic bags, that kind of stuff. And into the trash. Okay, let's see what's in the garbage can. Yeah, why not? Oh, oh excellent. Oh, Heather and Renee go Enviro on the Leers. Busted. Yeah. Busted. We could eliminate probably 90% of what's in your garbage right now. Right now. So what are the low-down, dirty secrets to one garbage can a month? Step one, recycle all you can. You basically set your house up so that your recycle bins outnumber your trash cans. You make it so easy that you can't not recycle. We have these little recycling cans that we put in our bathrooms. And I even made a little label here that says, you know, recycle please. And then paper, cardboard, plastic containers and bags, metal and glass. If you don't have a recycling can in your bathroom, chances are these are just going to end up in the garbage can. Step two, compost all your kitchen scraps. You know, when you're chopping off your carrot tops, just mm -hmm. pop them in the can 
and your strawberry tops and any of your potato peelings or any of your scraps. Um, after a couple, two or three days, just carry it outside to your outdoor compost bin. Step three, and this is key, replace disposables with durables. Our kids routinely take cold lunch as well, and um, you know I will pack them cloth napkins. Oh, those are cute. Those yeah, are nice. cute those are. So you just pop that in the washing machine. Both of these, these are just wash and wear. And in some ways, it's a return to simplicity. Lunch boxes with a real fork and spoon, real towels instead of rolls of paper, and containers that go in the dishwasher, not the dump. And finally, step four. Make an effort to pre-cycle. That means bring less packaging into your home to begin with, so you have less trash overall. So, you know, a lot of packaged foods, you can buy more things in bulk, mm -hmm. so less of the wrappings to deal with. I'm seeing some cheese sticks, individually wrapped cheese sticks. A good alternative to buying an individually packaged piece of cheese like this is just to buy a block of cheese mm -hmm. and then slice off small pieces of it and then pack it in a small container. Okay. While small disposable packages seem practical, they can really add up, often to mountains of garbage. I know it's convenient and unfortunately convenience is, is what has gotten this country, you know, the world into the, the shape that it's in. It becomes habit. I mean, you, you start looking at everything you do with a, with a different perspective. <laughs> trip to the market with the Lears helped to do just that. Here's a, a good example of packaged convenience right here. So a good alternative would be to buy the big box of oats. The take home message, buy in bulk whenever you can, minimizing excess wrappings, boxes and cartons. It means less garbage, more green. All right, so how, how painful was this? N uh, not too bad, not too bad. The composting is going to be a whole lot easier than we expected. It will be pretty easy, and we have a pretty good starting point. It's just nice to have the recycling systems already set up. We can look back and say, wow, you know, so, we know, have implemented so many changes. Uh, we still have a long ways to go. I mean, it's a journey. An ambitious journey for Gene Roy. We just have to keep plugging away, and we'll get there. You know, we'll get the t towards zero waste eventually. And a journey that Heather and Renee believe any family can begin if they're willing to dump tradition for a few trashy ideas. This is Lisa Fletcher for Nightline in Portland, Oregon. Your recycling gauntlet has been set. Our thanks to Lisa Fletcher. And when we come back, 